starts at 12. The night beat starts right now. The impeachment trial of President Donald Trump continuing at this hour. This is a live look from Capitol Hill. The rules that will govern the third impeachment trial in American history and what witnesses can be subpoenaed are still being argued right now. Now each side getting 24 hours over three days to make their opening statements, followed up by 16 hours of questioning from senators. And the evidence from the House will automatically be admitted into the record. We'll check back in a few moments for the very latest, but first. Back here at home, a night of music ending in gunfire. Two people killed, five injured. Tonight, the owner of the downtown bar where it all happened issuing a response, saying Sunday's shooting has left them devastated and their staff in a mixed state of grief and disbelief. A vigil is scheduled to take place at the bar tomorrow at 6 p.m. Tonight's response was posted on Ventura's Facebook page, saying in part, we cannot understand nor could we have ever imagined this terrible tragedy that took place in our establishment. The venue went on to say, quote, the future of Ventura will involve much recovery and healing, not only for ourselves, but for the friends and families, a part of our community, end quote. The Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission is now investigating Ventura. One major question, did that bar's employees and staff and management take the right steps to ensure safety? This downtown bar is on Avenue B, not far from Jones and Broadway. On Sunday, police say 19-year-old Kiernan Williams fired several rounds, killing two people and injuring five others. The youngest victim to be injured, just 16 years old. The TABC says the breach of the peace investigation that's now being conducted is standard procedure anytime there is a violent incident resulting in death or serious injury. Among several factors, investigators will be looking at whether alcohol contributed to the shooting. Whether guns were allowed where they should be pro not be permitted will be another factor in the investigation. Police Chief William McManus has said that metal detector wands were not used the night of that shooting. In two other news, a 15-year-old boy charged with capital murder will remain in juvenile detention. The teenager arrested late last year in connection with the murder of 34-year-old Sean Baker. Baker shot and killed in November while in his car on Sundrop Bay. That's near Zamora Middle School. Today, a detention hearing was held for the teen. A judge decided to keep him in custody. The state also said during the hearing it has filed a motion to try the teen as an adult. A decision on that has not been made yet. The teen's next detention hearing will be next month. It is a land dispute along the Mission Reach that is now more than 13 years in the making. A local family given more than $1.5 million to hand over property along the San Antonio River, only to be told years later by a jury they had to pay a lot of that money back. That trial was, you said, over three years ago. Yes. How much money has the River Authority gotten back? Uh, to date, none. In complicating matters, according to the family, the attorney who handled their case is now in prison. Dylan Collier untangles the truth in this Defender's Report. Good? Yeah. Bear County taxpayers provided a majority of the $271 million in funding for the Mission Reach. But the project was managed by the San Antonio River Authority, which designed the eight miles of walk and bike paths to move in sync with the San Antonio River. Make the river more of a natural habitat than just the strict engineered drainage ditch that it was. General Counsel David Ross says that meant the River Authority had to buy more than 80 pieces of property, a process that went relatively smoothly, all things considered, until the public entity in late 2006 encountered father and son Jesus and Rene Sanchez, owners of two unoccupied tracts of land along the river in the 100 block of Mitchell Street. We couldn't agree on what that value was. In fact, public records show the two sides have always been miles apart. The River Authority had the properties appraised for $123,000. The Sanchez family, after hiring attorney Carlos Uresti. Did Senator Uresti have sex with Ms. Cantu at his law office? Yes, that Carlos Uresti offered to hand over the land for just under four million bucks. 
A group of special commissioners later awarded the family over $1.5 million for the properties. Needing to move forward with construction on the Mission Reach, the River Authority paid the family, but then decided to challenge the award in court. Years later, in May 2016, a Bear County jury lowered the payout to $800,000 putting the Sanchez's on the hook for a substantial amount of money they believed was rightfully theirs. Here along Mitchell Street, the Mission Reach project was finished years ago, but there is still one item left outstanding, and it's a big one. Nearly three quarters of a million dollars the River Authority is still trying to get back. Would you agree that that's a lot of money, even for a big project like this? Sure. The reality is a Bear County jury thought the property was worth uh, $800,000 and the Sanchez family has done nothing to appeal that judgment. All that is a riverfront property. Right. Reach for comment, a member of the Sanchez family agreed to talk to us but didn't want his face shown. He says Uresti's 2017 arrest and subsequent imprisonment took his focus away from their case. Well, it complicated things because we should have appealed it. He described the River Authority's negotiations for the properties insulting from the very beginning, including the entity's decision to file a lien against his brother and father, who's now elderly and battling long-term health problems. Do you think the River Authority will ever get this money back? It, it's hard to say, but I think that uh, we may get some of it back. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. River Authority officials say fewer than 10 of the properties they needed for the Mission Reach project were acquired using eminent domain. The Sanchez disagreement was the only dispute that actually went to a jury. New on the night beat, he was wanted by the San Antonio Police Department. Tonight, the U.S. Marshals Service Lone Star Fugitive Task Force found 27-year-old Pearson Hanna in Waco. He was wanted after police say he robbed a local pawn shop at gunpoint. Investigators say cash and jewelry were taken. Hannah is now with the McLennan County Jail awaiting extradition back to San Antonio. Also new tonight, it's a case connecting continents. Adam Azaris was working as a cab driver here in San Antonio when he was shot and killed a year ago. Tonight, his friend tells the night team's Patty Santos the loss of the 50 year old has impacted his community all the way back home in Africa. He was a very humble, pious person that I've ever met in my entire life. He was giving, he would sacrifice not eating to give some food to the homeless. That's how Adam Azari will always be remembered. The 50 year old was shot and killed while sitting in his taxi cab parked in the lot of this thrift store along I-35 and Eisenhower Road on January 17th of last year. His friend Tammy says the killer took more than one life. He was the provider for his mother, his sick brother, his children, his almost like an entire village. Seeking the American dream, Azari left behind three children and wife back in Somalia. The news of his death left his kids feeling helpless. And he's saying to me, Auntie, if I could come right now, I would turn over every stone to find the killer of my father. To hear a seven-year-old say that is not normal and it's painful. Friends here in San Antonio have been demanding answers, some scared, wondering if his death was a hate crime. The Muslim community was upset and in dismay a year ago. Last week was one year. On Friday, the whole community was in dismay and crying again. Co-workers at the Yellow Cab office just outside of Wincrest, where he worked, say he was very well liked. Wincrest police have not made an arrest in his murder. Just that keeping the prayers that the killer will have remorse and come forward and do what's right. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. We've got a night, but night beat update right now. That 100 year old home in the King William neighborhood, the massive tree crashed onto it last week. Well, that tree has been removed tonight. We saw crews on the property putting the repair process into motion. Weather is not believed to have knocked the tree over. We're told the tree itself more than 100 years old. Let's take a look at a side by side comparison right now. The video on the left shows the day the tree fell onto the home on Wick Street on the right. The video we captured earlier today, the woman inside the home. OK, despite that 50 foot red oak tree that came, came right down. District one councilman Roberto Trevino reminds residents an arborist with the city can always take a look at the trees to make sure 
they're safe. San Antonio Metro Health encouraging everyone tonight to get your flu shot. Two new pediatric flu related deaths have been reported in Bear County. That brings the total number of local children who have died from the flu this season to three. The CDC recommends children as young as six months old get the flu vaccine. We have information on where you can get a free flu shot right now on our website at ksap.com. And today outside was our transition day. The clouds rolling in. Now they're getting lower in the sky. Rain is developing out there. We're going to have the showers developing overnight. It's going to be a soggy morning commute, so prepare for that. Umbrella, rain jacket at the bus stop for the kids. And no big temperature change really anytime soon. We're not looking at a big cold front or even a big warm up uh, within the near future. 55 right now at the airport, 58 Castroville, Banderas 53 along with Bulverde and New Braunfels. We'll be back to take a close look at the radar, show you where some showers are popping up and give you more details on the timeline for the rain and how much could fall coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Still ahead on the night beat an update on the plans to bring a quick trip to an east side community. The controversial plan, the vote taken today and what's expected to happen next. And the latest from Capitol Hill as President Trump's impeachment trial gets underway next on the Night Beat. Let's take you back out live now to Capitol Hill. The impeachment trial of President Donald Trump underway. President Trump overseas, but his team says he is being updated constantly. As far as rule changes for the trial, opening arguments now slated for three days for each side instead of two. Democrats say that is still not good enough. They want to be able to subpoena documents and call witnesses that the White House has been blocking, including the president's national security advisor, John Bolton. But the president's team arguing House Democrats should have gone to the courts if those witnesses were so important. Moderate Republican Senator Susan Collins says she is still open to hearing from witnesses after opening arguments and a round of questions. A reminder, we are streaming tonight's proceedings live right now on KSAT.com. Back here at home tonight, plans for a quick trip on the east side, hitting a bump in the road. That's after some people living in the Government Hill neighborhood told us their concerns about property values and the potential of being forced from their homes. Today, the City of San Antonio Zoning Commission denied Quick Trip's request to rezone two acres of residential property for commercial use. But this is not the end. City officials say the Planning Commission will take up this issue tomorrow. Both commissions will make recommendations to the full City Council. It will then be up to the Council members to approve or deny the zoning change request. Right now, there are people living on the two acres of property in question. Quick Trip has said the property owner and QT are giving each tenant relocation assistance, which includes monetary assistance and help from a real estate agent. A rosary scheduled tomorrow for District Court Judge Ray Olivari. He died after a battle with cancer. Tomorrow, the public invited to San Fernando Cathedral for a visitation. It's going to start at 6 p.m. The rosary will begin at 7. The funeral mass will then take place on Thursday at 11 in the morning at the Church of the Blessed Sacrament on Oblate Drive. Interment will follow at Holy Cross Cemetery on Nacogdoches Road. There will not be any civil district courts on Thursday to allow those judges to attend services. Flags at all county facilities will remain at half staff until Thursday night. And right now on KSAD.com, a look at the American flag and the proper etiquette that goes along with it. The story we first showed you in our Understand series on KSAT's News at 9. You can hear from the flag expert on what to do and not to do right now on our website, KSAT.com. Let's take a look outside with live cam this evening. 55 degrees out there. We are watching for some rain, Adam. Yeah, and that rain is developing off to the northwest of us. It's going to take its time, but it's going to make it here, I think, and drop into town overnight, and we'll wake up to the little pitter-patter of rain outside and one of those hard days to roll out of bed. And so we'll want to go right back to bed. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's something happening on the edge of our viewing area right now. There is, yeah, yeah, up in the hill country. That's where we have a few showers that have already developed and are moving through parts of Kerr County and even into Gillespie County. So first we'll start with a look at radar, then we'll jump into what's causing this, how long it's going to last, and when the sun comes out again also how much rain could fall. But right now on the radar, not a whole lot of activity, but we're starting to see uh, the beginning of it. 
in the Hill Country, Real County, Edwards County, now moving into Western Kerr County, just some areas of very light rainfall. And this is how it's going to start. Some passing light showers, which will eventually work their way down into San Antonio in the coming hours. We're just on the edge of this system, though. Take a look at this good swath of rain. West Texas earlier today, the Panhandle as well, moving through North Texas, a good chunk of the Lone Star State getting in on some of this moisture. It's nice. It's good to see. Nothing severe associated with it. Just good rainfall. Now, there's no big cold front that's driving this, so don't expect a big temperature change tomorrow. This is all upper level support right now with a lot of energy out ahead of that upper level disturbance causing this shield of precipitation here, but also some good Pacific moisture up above us that's feeding right into it. And our air throughout the evening and even right now is just gradually saturating, just getting itself primed and ready for those raindrops. If it had tried to rain earlier today, it all would have evaporated. But as we go through the night, those raindrops will be able to make it to the ground. And I like our future casts and how it handles the situation. It maybe overdoes it a little bit for 11 p.m., but I like the placement of it just northwest of San Antonio. Then we get to about 1 a.m., and it should start to just clip parts of northwestern Bear County and even parts of San Antonio. Mainly light in nature, but we can't rule out a, for a few little moderate bursts of rain here and there and let's hope for that because then it would just tally up the rainfall accumulations morning drive tomorrow 7 8 a.m damp yes it's going to be soggy out there to start the day tomorrow even at the noon hour we'll have some areas of rain kids indoor recess tomorrow that's for sure and then we get into the afternoon for the evening drive home and it looks like most of the rain will have pushed eastward at that point but we'll still be dealing with overall dampness left over from that rain but i expect the morning commute to be a little more problematic than the evening commute a little more active during the morning commute weather wise. So here's that breakdown. Look at that really high rain chances. We're expecting it widespread morning rush hour through the noon hour, and then it starts to taper off into the afternoon. Three, four o'clock we will drop the percentage down to 30, 40%. As for temperatures, 50 in the morning, near 60 in the afternoon. So how much can we expect? Well, I'll tell you this lesser amounts closer to the Rio Grande there maybe a tenth of an inch or, or a quarter of an inch. You get into San Antonio and parts of northeastern Bear County, half inch to three quarters of an inch, definitely a possibility. And that's the same story for everybody basically up the I-35 corridor or along and east of I-37 there. So where you see the blue on the screen, that's where we have that potential of maybe three quarters of an inch. So not a drought buster, but a little bit of a drought denter and we'll take it. The aquifer, of course, will like to slurp it up as well. So by we by Thursday, we'll have a lot of sunshine again. Morning fog, then sunny and right near 70. A beautiful Thursday, Friday, pretty much following suit into the weekend. A little bit of uncertainty as towards uh, as far as rain chances go. Right now we're saying a few isolated showers possible. We will be fine tuning that forecast, but temperatures not changing much. We'll be in the 60s. All right. Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm. All right. An ugly scene playing out in one of the most hallowed arenas in all of college basketball. And that's the critical thing. It's in college basketball, not professional, not the NBA. When we come back, it was between Kansas and Kansas State, the close of the game. And this happened when we come back, the fallout that continues as the punches are thrown. And guess who's hosting Saturday Night Live coming up? This is exciting. No. No good. Oh, this is terrible. A horrible brawl in college basketball tonight between two in-state rivals in big board sports, but first. The NBA's number one draft pick, Zion Williamson, will make his NBA regular season debut tomorrow night when New Orleans Pelicans host our San Antonio Spurs. Williamson missed the first half of the NBA regular season after suffering a knee injury during the preseason and admits before tomorrow night's game, he's pretty excited, even predicting a sleepless night tonight. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going to get sleep. I'm going to be too excited thinking about my first NBA game. Oh, yeah, it's very exciting to be coming back during this time. Um, you know, we did go through a bad stretch, but things have turned around. Um, everybody's been playing better, and I'm just looking to go join in and have the fun. 
All right, the Spurs are coming off a hard-fought road win against the Suns in Phoenix last night. Even after they saw their 20-point lead erased to the fourth quarter, but Derek White scored a season-high 25 points, including the key three-pointer to help preserve the 120-118 victory. Notice the tip time has been changed for a later time at 8.30 to accommodate a national broadcast. Terrible incident in college basketball is one of the oldest and most famous venues, Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. The Jayhawks were wrapping up an 81-60 victory over KSA when one of the Wildcats, Dewan Gordon, stole the ball only to have a shot at Tim Block. Silvio D'Souza stood over him. D'Souza throws multiple punches, even grabs a chair. You can even see a player that was on the bench throwing punches. The worst part about it, the brawl, it spills into the fans seated along the baseline. Coaches and a security guard finally got the players under control, but the fallout is just beginning. See the chair. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Houston Texans star J.J. Watt will host Saturday Night Live the night before Super Bowl 54 on February the 1st. The three-time Defensive Player of the Year retweeting Saturday Night Live's announcement, adding, I can't even pretend to hide my excitement about this. This is something truly special. I'm extremely grateful from Lauren and everyone involved. New York City, let's have some fun. The San Francisco 49ers will be seeking their sixth Super Bowl title, the first in 25 years when they face the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. One week from this Sunday in Miami. While the odds makers have the Niners as early one-point underdogs, there's a reason why the 49ers are favored by others is their defense. Led by Eric Armstead and Nick Bosa, San Francisco has recorded 48 sacks on the year, nine just in the playoffs, and Bosa alone with three of them. Just what they need to go up against arguably the most talented quarterback in the NFL this season. Our defense has had a historically good year. You know, we didn't have to go out and air it out a ton, no one going into games like that. So we've tried to do it some old-fashioned ways at times. Our guys have gotten better at that as it's gone, and our defense has allowed us to do that no matter what. The Kansas City Chiefs have ended a 50-year drought with a trip to Super Bowl 54, 50 years after winning Super Bowl IV way back in 1969. They earned that trip by holding out the surprise team in the NFL postseason, the Tennessee Titans, this past Sunday, 35-24. And now the early one-point favors to beat the San Francisco 49ers to win the Lombardi Trophy. Now, it shows you what kind of game we're expecting. One reason why the Chiefs are averaging 43 points in the postseason behind quarterback Patrick Mahomes, who's already thrown eight touchdowns. These kids are coming out of college now that offensively are throwing the ball like crazy. And, and um, so we're, we're utilizing that from whatever formations uh, might be familiar with them or to them. And, um, you know, just try to give them an opportunity. All right, who gets the call to the Hall of Major League Baseball and high school basketball next? Shortstop Derek Jeter and outfielder Larry Walker elected to baseball's Hall of Fame today. And Jeter, who played his entire 20-year career where the Yankees were just one vote shy of joining his former teammate Mariano Rivera as an unanimous choice. 14-time All-Star helped lead the Yankees to the five World Series titles in his career, playing in a record 158 playoff games while scoring 100 or more runs 13 times, had a lifetime average of 310. For Walker, he just cleared the 75% threshold for enshrinement by just six votes in his final year of eligibility after spent his 17-year career with the Expos, Rockies, and Cardinals winning the 1997 National League MVP, winning seven gold gloves, National League batting crowns in 1998 and 1999. High school basketball tonight, the Brandeis Broncos taking their 8-1 record in District 28-6A up against Clark Cougars, and the Broncos are kicking it early. Kyle Schaefer with a three, but the Cougars answer with one of their own. Jason Asomna misses his first attempt, but he's able to get the putback to drop in just before the end of the first quarter. Tanner Brown with a buzzer beating three, and the Broncos win it 72-54. Ladies now, the Animal Convocation Center. Sam Houston Hurricanes taking on the Brackenridge Eagles. Eagles flying high, already of 40 to 18 at the half. Adding to that in the third quarter, Sky Thomas with the three, but the Hurricanes blow through that lane. This is Khadijah Derry with a scoop to the hoop, but too much Brack attack tonight. The Eagles' Genesis to Ron with another three, and Brackenridge takes it in an upset, 59 to 44, going back to the college basket brawl. There'll be a lot of ramifications coming out of that, suspensions, and it'll be interesting to see how many for how long. Long. And I saw the Kansas athletic director already apologizing tonight for what happened. Both should. Both schools should. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Feel like being top dog? Well, the Oscar Mayer company looking for drivers to fill the seats of the Wiener Mobile. To be hired, drivers have to finish a special school called Hot Dog High. Of course it is. <laughs> the company in Rockford, Illinois, has 12 openings for drivers who would operate six Wiener Mobiles in teams of two. Maybe you can be a real wiener. That would be <laughs> awesome. I would, I would relish the opportunity. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right, rainy day tomorrow. All right? <laughs> rainy, soggy day tomorrow near 60. And that's it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs>
I think I got you speechless a little bit.